स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया so further further uh, f of x bar uh, is the maximum local maximum f of x bar is the local maximum if the partial f partial x1 square is negative or partial f partial x2 square is negative right and it is a local minimum if i have the second derivative of f with respect to x2 is positive or well x1 respectively x2 is positive okay so that concludes our second derivative test uh, well there is one final statement suppose the discriminant is zero then our second derivative test fails so x x is a degenerate uh, it's a degenerate vector degenerate stationary point right or the nature in this case the nature the nature of this point x bar determined by higher order terms right so determined determined by higher order higher order terms fine uh, let's say cubic terms and so on cubic or higher right because uh, no longer we are able to determine the nature of the extremal just by looking at the quadratic term so we can continue our discussion for functions of several independent variable i am just going to briefly state the result so for functions for functions of three uh, or more three or more independent variables for functions of three or more independent variables i see that my stationary points are found by take setting the gradients equal to 0 are found by setting the gradients equal to 0 and <coughs> the sign of f of x bar the sign of this difference <coughs> is going to be controlled by the quadratic term q q of eta but q of eta will have the form that i just i'm going to write so the sign of this difference is controlled is controlled by quadratic terms by quadratic terms in the taylor's expansion in the taylor's expansion uh, given by q of eta equals equals eta transpose h of x bar eta right so the quadratic terms are governed by this uh, this uh, product the sign of this uh, pro vector product will tell us the nature of the extremal okay where where my h is the my h is the so called so h is the so called hessian matrix okay and i am sure students are familiar with this matrix this is of the form uh, partial to partial f partial xi partial xj so this is my hessian matrix and uh, <coughs> so suppose h is definite uh, well all this concept of definiteness should be looked at in the standard multivariate texts or uh, the student should google because this is some basic concepts i am just revising so suppose h is definite so suppose my hessian is definite 
it is a definite matrix, then f has the function f has a local extrema right extrema at x and suppose h is <coughs> indefinite suppose h is indefinite then x turns out to be x is a saddle point x is a saddle point and uh, so so further we can classify the first statement namely if h is positive definite then we expect that the local extrema is is minima and if it is negative definite then the local extrema is the maxima right so we can uh, write down these further results so then i am going to end my discussion on this finite dimensional calculus by providing two results which are of extreme importance especially when we discuss our optimization of functional calculus the first result is in the form of the morse lemma which tells us how to distinguish between the saddle points the local maxima and the local minima in the neighborhood of extrema so the morse lemma let so this is my lemma 3 now lemma 2 was introduced in lecture 2. So, the Morse lemma says the following, it says that suppose, suppose I am given x naught which is a non degenerate, non degenerate stationary point, non degenerate stationary point for a smooth <coughs> function f, then there exists a smooth, then there exists a smooth invertible, there exists a smooth invertible coordinate transformation, there exists a smooth invertible coordinate transformation uh, of x naught such that f of x minus f of x naught is so there is a smooth invertible coordinate transformation of x naught uh, coordinate transformation well let me call this well well i have to say something about the coordinate transformation so there is a smooth invertible coordinate transformation from x j to x j of v right where where my vector v which is v1 v2 vn is defined in a neighborhood in a neighborhood of x naught it is defined in the neighborhood of x naught uh, of n of x naught of x naught such that uh, we have that f of x is equal to f of x naught minus v 1 square up to v lambda square plus v lambda plus 1 square plus and so on plus v n square right. So, it essentially says that suppose x naught is a critical point then I can uh, I can find a certain uh, coordinate transformation a map uh, in which when my independent variables are transformed I can write down my function into uh, this form that I have shown right. <coughs> so, this holds this holds throughout throughout this holds throughout n of x naught right where lambda lambda is the saddle uh, it is a saddle well lambda is the index it is the index of it is called the index of the point x naught right now so what is the significance of lambda so suppose so notice this notice what is being subtracted here so consider this quantity v1 square plus v2 square plus v lambda square minus v lambda plus 1 square minus so on um, until v n square right. So, we call this 
we call this as the Morse Morse lambda saddle, right? Now specifically, if I have that, if my n is equal to well lambda is equal to n, right? Which means that all the terms are being subtracted v1 to vn. Then what do I expect? I expect that my x naught is a local max, right? Any fun function value at any point other than x naught near the neighborhood of in the neighborhood of x naught will be lower than the functional value at x naught. So, the conclusion here is if my n well the index is n then I see that my Morse saddle is a local extrema a local maxima right and if on the other hand if lambda is 0 then my Morse saddle is a local minima right the functional value at x naught so the functional value at x naught is the lowest possible value among all such point x in the neighborhood of x naught in the second case okay so then i end my discussion by now stating a result in the form of a theorem the theorem is known as the sylvester theorem Syl sylvester Sylvester criteria, right? So essentially, it tells me that suppose, uh, suppose I have. Uh, so this criteria tells me about uh, the condition for which a matrix, let's say the Hessian matrix, is when is it positive definite or when is it negative definite? Okay. So conditions. So it is the condition under which the condition under which the quadratic the conditions under which the quadratic form is definite right so for that let us consider so the statement says let us consider the vector of the form x1 to xn and let us denote a, an n by n matrix so let a denote denote an n by n symmetric symmetric matrix so the sylvester criteria says so with with entries aij okay so my sylvester criteria says that a necessary a necessary as well as so necessary as well as sufficient condition for condition for the existence Nay, for the for the quadratic form for the quadratic form to be positive definite is that all its principal minors is positive namely uh, in particular all the diagonal elements are positive as well as all the determinant of the matrix is positive okay so let me write down what i just said so for the quadratic form uh, the the form is in this form x transpose a x. So, these are my bilinear forms that I have to check. So, for all the quadratic forms this to be positive definite definite is that every principal minor every principal minor minor of the determinant of the matrix A is positive or in particular in particular my determinant of A itself is positive and and all diagonal elements diagonal elements A J J they are also positive. Okay. So, so that is the Sylvester criteria for finding the uh, the positive or the negative definiteness of the matrix, and we now have the sufficient background to look at the optimization of functionals. So let me now start with with uh, briefly start with the basic definition. So the major description will come in our next lecture. So second variations. 
variation of functionals. Okay. So, I am going to look at the basic functional, the basic fixed point, fixed point functionals. Okay. Uh, well, functionals. Okay. So, we seek, we are seek, seeking smooth functions, smooth functions y from the interval x 0 to x 1 to r such that y of x naught is y naught and y of x 1 is y 1 and such that the extremal j of y which is integral from x 0 to x 1 f t x. Uh, the, the functional has an extremum has an extremum at y. Okay. So, then we assume we, we continue our discussion with the standard perturbation argument. So, assume assume a perturbation uh, assume a perturbation of the form y hat. So, this is a one variable setup. So, y hat is equal to y plus epsilon eta. We assume a perturbation of this form where epsilon is positive and eta is smooth. Right, epsilon is positive and eta is a smooth function, and then we use Taylor series. We use Taylor series in our uh, on the integrand of f. Right. We use Taylor series on the integrand of f. So my f of uh, f of x comma y hat comma y hat prime will be f of x comma y comma y prime. So, we are expanding about the extremal plus epsilon times eta of partial f partial y plus eta prime partial f partial y prime plus epsilon square by 2 eta square partial f partial y square and plus 2 eta eta prime partial 2 f partial y partial y prime plus eta prime square partial to f partial y prime square okay plus order epsilon cube okay so then so i can rewrite this from here i can find what is the putter, what is the variation in the functional so my variation well my variation in the functional j of y hat the perturbed value minus j of y is equal to epsilon of delta of j eta comma y plus epsilon square by 2 delta square of j of uh, eta comma y plus order epsilon q right. So, our perturbation is of this form notice that we have only written up to second order. So, then where I know that this is my standard first variation, we have done a lot of uh, problems on the first variation. So, we do not worry about it. Let us now look at the second variation. So, the second variation, uh, so my second variation of this functional is of this form integral of x naught to x 1. So, notice the way how I write. So, eta square f y y plus 2 eta eta prime f y y prime plus eta prime square f y prime y prime times d x. Notice that this quantity is nothing but this whole quantity is nothing but eta prime uh, well this is nothing but this is eta square prime right. Now, so what how does it help? Now, suppose using this uh, using this information suppose we do integration by uh, well we do integration by parts on this underlined uh, quantity. So, we integrate by parts and we change this integral into this following form. So, eta square times f y y minus f y prime y y prime d d x of this quantity plus eta prime square of f y prime y prime d x 
right this d x and then uh, we will show that uh, the sign of this second variation completely depends on the sign of this quantity. Uh, well, we will just uh, state the result, but before that uh, I just want to highlight well again uh, bef even before that let me also quickly introduce my sets h and s and h. So, s is the set from where I am going to pick all my extremal functions. So, it is all y from so all y uh, so all y from c 2 of x naught x 1 uh, such that y of x naught is y naught fixed point problem y of x 1 is y 1 and my set h is the set of all perturbation functions such that eta of x naught is equal to eta of x 1 is equal to 0. Now, suppose so, I need to now connect the sign of the second variation with the location of the maxima or the minima. So, this next result theorem 23 exactly does that. So, it tells me whether j del square j greater than 0 gives me maxima or minima and vice versa. So, it says the following the result says suppose, suppose j has, has a local extremum has a local extremum at at y which belongs to the set s which we described above then then the first part of the result says that del square j is positive implies that y y is a local local minimum uh, this is for all eta in h and if the second part says that if del square j is negative then I get that y is my local maximum, right. So, that is the relation between max and min and the sign of the second variation, ok. So, uh, similarly we can see that, uh, so condition a and b are related to the semi definiteness of the Hessian matrix. So, when we eventually calculate the second derivative, the second variation we have to look at the definiteness or the semi definiteness of my hessian matrix which is involved in this setup ok. So, then uh, I am going to finally end this topic here by stating one of the very vital results known as the Legendre condition. So, so the Legendre condition is as follows. Uh, so, this is the first of the results that I am going to state in order to determine the sign of the second variation. So, the idea is to determine determine the sign the sign of del square j right because once we know the sign we can immediately say whether the extremum involved is maxima or minima so the legendre condition exactly does that so the legendre condition so it says the following it says that it is in the form of a result theorem so it says that let us assume that j is my functional. So, it is the functional which is the basic uh, fixed point functional. So, basic fixed point uh, functional uh, that we have began with and where, where my integrand f is a smooth function. When I say smooth, this is continuously differentiable up to uh, second order function of x y and y prime. Uh, suppose, suppose j has, has a local, has a local minimum in s at, at y, then the result says that f of y prime, y prime must be non-negative for all x, for all x in the interval under consideration. So, this is a crucial uh, crucial quantity whose sign needs to be checked to determine whether we have found a local minimum or not. Again the proof is not going to be shown here, but for the proof I am going to I am going to refer to this particular expression for the second variation of j saying that the almost the entire 
uh, the, the most dominant term in this expression is the second term and hence the sign is completely determined by the second term. And for the complete proof, I am going to refer to this following text, calculus of variation by Bruce Van Brunt that we are also following in this course. Uh, this is the book in by in published by Springer. So, students are asked to refer for the complete proof. Let us quickly look at an example of the application of Legendre condition. So, the condi so let me consider a functional of the form j of y is equal to integral minus 1 to 1 x times square root of 1 plus y prime square dx. We see that f of y prime y prime is given by the following x by 1 plus y prime square to the power 3 by 2. Now, this can uh, this changes sign in the interval, right. So, this changes sign from x uh, from x minus 1 to 1, right. The denominator is always positive, but the numerator changes sign and students are asked to check that check that the solution uh, the solution to the Euler Lagrange equation for this functional is not a minimum, right. Students are asked to check and this Legendre condition guarantees because the sign changes, right. We will end this discussion by giving one more example as of that of the catenary, right. So, recall in our catenary problem, uh, we will look at the unconstrained, the unconstrained problem, okay. So, in the catenary problem, my f of x comma y comma y prime is of the form y minus lambda the integrand y minus lambda times 1 plus y prime square. And let me quickly evaluate this Legendre derivative f y prime y prime. This comes out to be y minus lambda divided by 1 plus y prime square to the power 3 by 2, right. Notice that the sign of uh, the sign of y minus lambda determines the sign of uh, the sign of f y prime y prime. And uh, if people recall that y minus lambda y being the extremal, uh, they recall that the solution in this case was 2 zeta hat cos hyperbolic uh, zeta hat 2 x minus 1. This problem was done few lectures back and notice that the sign of y minus, so this is my extremal solution coming from my Euler Lagrange equation, from Euler Lagrange equation and the sign of y minus lambda is, well cos is always, the cos hyperbolic is always non-negative. So, the sign is completely determined by the sign of xi hat. So, students are asked to check that positive solution, the positive root gives us the minima and that is confirmed by the Legendre condition. So, thank you very much for listening and in the next lecture I am going to look at, well we will begin with a slightly bad news that Legendre condition is not going to be sufficient in determining uh, whether a extrema is maxima or minima. Well, it helps, but it is not the condition that we are after. So, thank you very much for listening. Thanks a lot.